guys, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Natalie. My channel is all about luxury, vintage, fashion, and styling. So if you're interested in any of those, please consider hitting the subscribe button below. Today I'm gonna be sharing all of my handbag, storage, and cleaning tips with you guys. I filmed this video years ago, so I figured it was time for an update. I just did a Amazon Live, which if you don't know, I am doing those weekly now over on Amazon. And I just share like different topics every week. I've done makeup tutorials, handbag storage and tips, fashion hacks, all sorts of things. So I will leave the link down in the description box. I figure I would do like a little condensed version and kind of share all the kind of similar things that I did in that Amazon Live. So let's start with handbag storage. I have updated the storage here that's behind me in my videos a little bit to kind of tweak it and make it even better. So I've kind of played around for years trying different ways of storing things and I find that this has been the best for me. First of all, this bookcase is from Ikea. It's actually a bookcase. It's the, called the Billy bookcase. It's in the gray color and I got the optional glass doors. So you always wanna make sure as far as storing handbags, they're in somewhere that is dust free. So either behind something that's enclosed or you keep them stored in their dust bags just so they don't accumulate dust and dirt over time. You also wanna keep them in a dimly lit area. So if it is a room that has light, you wanna make sure you have a way of keeping it dark the majority of the time. Like right now I have it bright just cause I'm filming, but most of the time it's pretty dark in here. So you don't wanna overexpose your bags to too much sunlight over time that could lighten it up. So that's something to be aware of. And so I don't store the majority of my bags in dust bags but I do keep something like this in a dust bag just because it is patent leather and patent leather, you wanna be really careful. It doesn't end up touching other bags or even touching itself because patent can stick to other objects and ends up having a lot of like color transfer or stickiness to it. So you always wanna be really careful with patent leather. I just like to keep it in its dust bag when it's not in use. If you don't already have dust bags from some of your other bags, you can always buy them online. Everything I'm talking about in this video today, I will have everything linked down in the description box below to shop. You just hit the more button to expand. You may have to hit two different ones just depending on which device you're using. If you hit the two mores, it should expand and all the links will be down there. So the first upgrade I got to my storage system are these hangers. And what's great is you can adjust them here depending on the height that you want them. So depending on the shelf that you're putting them. And as you can see, I have two of my bags hanging here where I don't want the straps to kind of sit and be folded down on each other. So I like to store anything with like a softer strap on these kind of hangers. Same with like Bottega bags. I think they do really well on these type of hangers. So I got several of these. These come in a three pack, so really handy at least to start kind of storing. And these work not only on a shelf, but you can also, you know, you put it wherever. It's good for the bag and also it does very nicely to slay the handbags, which I always like to see my handbags. I think that that's like the beauty of them. They're like my artwork. So I like to see everything nicely laid out and stored properly. The next thing I've added are these clear acrylic risers. They're perfect when you're trying to layer multiple bags and you want everything visible. So these come in packs of eight, I believe, and they're different heights. So you can play around with the different heights of everything. I love having a bag sitting up higher and then I can display another bag in front and you can nicely see everything. So this is how I get that second row of bags on my shelving. Another way you can store items are these type of containers. They're clear. So again, you can see everything through and these are great, especially for shoes. So if you are someone who has on display both shoes and handbags, this is really nice. You can also stack on top of it. It's enclosed, but it still has some holes for breathing and it keeps everything really nice, but also visible and dust free. And I'm going to link one other type of riser, which I don't have, but I think would be really good if you're wanting to display things like clutches that aren't gonna really be sitting upright but need a little bit of back support on them. They're very similar to the risers, but just have support. Another way you can use dust bags is actually to stuff your bags, but you don't have to go and buy dust bags just to stuff your bags. Literally, you can use things like towels, you can use clothes, sheets, whatever you have. I would just make sure they are light colored so they're not gonna be risking any color transfer onto your bags. And same with dust bags, I would always go with the white ones just so you're not risking any sort of color transfer. You can also use something like air paper that comes in like your Amazon packages 
Again, as long as it's not colored, that's an easy way to stuff bags as well to help keep their shape. As far as leather cleaners, my absolute favorite is always the Cadillac leather cleaner. I've used this on all my bags and especially my vintage bags over the years. It really helps to hydrate your leather, keep it rich and supple. It adds shininess. It also helps clean if you have any sort of discoloration on them, as well as protects the leather from further damage down the line. So something like this is very important. Now, of course, if you are concerned, you can always ask the boutique about your specific bag and always spot test an area first. Now this is for leathers, like smooth leathers. It's not for suede. So please don't try to put this on suede. All I do is I shake it, open it using microfiber cloth. And then I usually just start with a little bit at a time. And again, patch test an area. On lighter color leathers, it will look wet. And all you're gonna do is just make sure as it dries, it should go back to its normal color. The spot test an inconspicuous area first. If that goes well, then all I do is I kind of get it into the microfiber cloth and I just lightly buff over. And now if you're gonna do a like larger area, obviously you can get a little bit more onto your microfiber cloth. What you're gonna do is rub it lightly over the entire surface. So you're getting a little bit of everything. You can take your time a little bit more over spots that need a little extra hydration or if there's a spot you're trying to clean. Although just be careful and go slowly because you may notice in some of older leathers, some of the coloring could potentially rub off or some leathers are actually have been touched up. So you just wanna be careful you're not removing pigments from the bag. So always just be careful, make sure you keep checking and you're checking the bag as well as you're doing this. And you'll notice the bag ends up a lot shinier. The leather feels more supple and soft. It's really great to condition bags. I kind of use this when I'm getting a new bag in. I kind of like rehydrate it in my possession, cleaned. And then I will usually do this every six months to a year, whatever it needs, just to kind of rehydrate the bag. It's very important for the longevity of leather to stay hydrated so it doesn't get cracks in it. For suede items, not just handbags, especially shoes. I do this for suede jackets, everything. I like to use this Cadillac Shield. It's a water repellent. Suede is very sensitive, especially to water. So one, don't wear your suede if you know it's going to be raining outside. But two, I always just like to spray this on. So all you do is spray it about eight to 12 inches away. I like to go just really quickly in circle motions just to lightly coat the bag all over. Do this either outside or in a well-ventilated area. Cover anything that you feel like shouldn't be getting spray on it. So if there's a lot of hardware on a bag, I would try to cover that and just be spraying the suede. Do it a little bit lightly. Again, test an area first inconspicuously to make sure it's going to be okay. And then spray it all over, lightly coated. Let that coat dry. And then I usually go back and at least do a second coat. So I feel like it's pretty well protected. Now, if you end up getting a mark on suede, first make sure it's not like a wet, dirty spot because if it's wet, you do not want to clean it while it's wet because the wetness will like make the dirt stick in suede more. So just make sure it's dry first before trying to get any sort of dirt out. Then you get one of these suede brushes and you can lightly try to brush the debris and dirt off the area. Now, just again, make sure you're doing little bits at a time, making sure you're not wearing down that area too much, then you can try that out. If all else fails, definitely take it to a cobbler that can kind of assess the situation and see if they can get the stain out. When in doubt, always take it to a professional. These are just kind of the tips that I do at home to kind of maintain my bags. And one other tip for suede bags, because I have had questions on whether to invest in suede bags or not, I personally either go vintage route, so if they're a little bit dirty, I don't usually mind just because it is vintage and loved and that doesn't bother me. I either go vintage or I go kind of like a moderate price point. I don't go ultra luxury bags when it comes to suede personally, just because I feel like I would baby the bag. I probably wouldn't reach for it a ton because I would be nervous that something would happen to it or get damaged. Suede is sensitive and it also is more prone to color transfer both onto your clothes if it's a darker suede and you're wearing something lighter, or if it's a lighter suede and you're wearing something darker like jeans, it could rub and get dirty as well. The protector does help, but it is something just a little bit more sensitive. So something to keep in mind, I like kind of a mid-range bag that's a beautiful suede, 
but it's not gonna make me feel so precious with the bag that I will never carry it. Cause the point of bags is to love it and to use it. And everyone's different in their viewpoints of what they feel comfortable with carrying or not. But me personally, I just wouldn't invest in a super expensive suede bag because one, I find the resale on them is not great because they usually don't stay in amazing condition. And two, I would just end up not reaching for it because I would baby it. So that's my reasoning on why I don't overly invest in really expensive luxury suede items. Shoes, I, you know, funny enough, because we get a lot of wear out of our shoes, I don't find suede as bad on shoes. And I don't know why that is. I typically go for darker suede on shoes. The lighter suede shoes that I do have, I just got a pair and actually they already have little, little marks on it, which kind of bother me. But I think because you're not like so close to them, like you are with a bag, I feel like I notice it less and shoes I'm kind of a little bit more okay with doing suede and like being hard on them. But for some reason bags, I just get a little bit more careful about them. To clean items such as denim or canvas, I would typically do really mild soap and water. Again, test an area first because sometimes fabrics, especially like satins and silks, will actually get watermarks on them. So you have to be really careful with satins and silks. But for something like this, try to spot clean. And this actual bag I did, it was dirtier when I got it and it's still not perfect. But what I did was I just did a rag with soap and water and just kind of gently would go over the areas, let it dry, see how it looked, do it again, repeat if I needed to. And that did take care of a lot of like the surface stains on this. And again, when in doubt, take it to a professional to see if they could help clean your bag as well. And I do know there's some online bag cleaning places as well, but I haven't personally tried them to like vouch for them, but I know they do exist. So there are options. So I hope you found this super helpful. If you enjoyed this video, give it a like and below if any of these particular tips were helpful for you. I'd love for you to subscribe if you're not already for more handbag content. I have videos pretty much on all my bags. I have my handbag collection videos if you want to learn more about each of these. And I just kind of do weekly videos all about my love of handbags. So I hope you will join with me as well. Don't forget to check me out on all of my other channels. If you want to see me style these bags regularly, you can head over to my Instagram for my daily outfits or my TikTok. And I also have a Substack as well. That's my free newsletter about all the things I'm loving and buying and shopping and kind of chat a little bit more about just the things I'm loving in the moment or bags I'm loving. I also do vintage edits on there as well on occasion. So definitely check there if you're looking to shop some vintage finds. Again, just a reminder, my Amazon Live will be linked below. If you wanna rewatch that or to watch any of my weekly ones that are going up, I would love for you to come join me there and you can ask me live questions as well, which is always fun. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Until the next one, take care, bye.